In part four, we looked at how the entities change in this model. Now we'll examine the connections between them, the communications channels. Communication involves the transmission of a signal between two or more points. The signal will be in some form of energy, and energy is subject to the second law of thermodynamics. The first level of communication is internal, the individual process of cognition. While you can stop a thought, you can't stop thinking. But this individual level is unsuited for survival in soccer. Complete self-absorption results in isolation. You see this in the game in situations of extreme mental, emotional, physical, stimulation, or stress. In those cases, until the player can reconnect with others, they are in a world of their own. Which means connecting with someone or something else. This level of communication involves sensory energy, the input we receive through the senses about specific targets, those people and things that get our attention. But what gets our attention is largely influenced by how it gets there. The visual system requires ongoing vigilance, selection, and effort. It requires high levels of internal processing energy and contributes the lion's share of negative entropy. But the visual process can be overridden by what we hear or feel. Our attention can be captured by these other forms of energy. This adds another level of complexity to soccer systems. Not only does each player have to rapidly decide who and when to join with, but they also have to decide on which energy channel to concentrate on. The choice of channels can be understood in terms of thresholds. With the visual system as the default channel, auditory and tactile energy must reach very high levels to gain dominance. This requires a lot of conscious effort and is difficult to maintain. These three channels are interdependent. When they work together smoothly, they increase situational awareness. When they don't, they create friction. At this point in the story, we have both the need to switch the targets of attention and the means of attending. But this constant switching from target to target, process to process, comes at a cost. The cycle of continually reorienting consumes both time and emotional, mental, and physical energy.